Dear students, welcome back. In the previous session, we have discussed about uh, the plantar arches. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about the weight distribution through ankle and foot. Okay. So, as we know that um, the foot is flexible rather than a fixed arch. The distribution of body weight through foot depends on many factors including the shape of the arch and the location of the line of gravity at any given moment and distribution of a superimposed body weight begins with talus because the talus is the main um, bone which receives all the weight that passes through the leg okay in bilateral stance each talus receives okay in bilateral each talus receives 50% of the body weight if you see in the unilateral stance it receives the 100% of the weight that is the superimposed body weight in standing at least 50% of weight received by the talus passes through the large posterior subtalar articulation to the calcaneus and the remaining 50% or less passes anteriorly through the talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid joints to the forefeet okay so the pattern of weight distribution through the foot we can see in this trabecular system okay so here the trabeculae which are formed here we can see on the medial aspect of the foot so why because uh, more, the talus is uh, located more medially in the foot so the 100% of the weight is transmitted directly on the talus from the talus it is um, divided into uh, greater than or equal to 50% to the posterior calcaneum see here the maximum forces or uh, maximum trabecular are formed that means this is the more stress area of the foot heel okay and then we can find um, on the talus that too on the upper part that is the superior part of the talus is receiving more forces and again it sends the remaining 50 or less than 50 or sending to the naviculo calcaneum and calcane naviculo uh, talo navicular and calcaneo cuboid joints and then to the cuneiforms and next it reaches to the meta tarsals so here again the most of the strain uh, most of the stress is taken by this meta tarsals here you can find more trabeculae and this is the part where trabeculae is not formed and this becomes the zone of weakness for the meta tarsals and this area is more prone to fractures here okay so this is the way how the forces or uh, transferred to the foot from the superimposed body weight okay yes now we will see in detail so because of the more medial location of the talar head about twice as much weight passes through the talo navicular joint as through the calcaneo cuboid joint so somewhat lesser roles of the more laterally located so medial side is receiving most most of the superimposed weight and um, on the lateral aspect uh, will uh, receive only some lesser amount of superimposed weight and so it plays a very lesser role and um, and that roles is also take over by the long and short plantar ligaments in supporting the longitudinal arch okay 
and um, it is attributable to the reduced weight bearing compression through the calcaneo cuboid joint in comparison with the medially located um, talo navicular joint that means calcaneo cuboid receives less amount of stress when compared to the talo navicular joint okay if you see in static standing the distribution of weight bearing can be variable and largely depend upon the foot type whether it may be a pes planus that is flat foot pes cavus that means uh, high arched foot so pes planus means flat foot and um, pes cavus is a high arched foot that is the medial arches we have to see here and or without any impactment that is normal arches and also some structural deformity will potentially affect the weight bearing pattern so any changes in the foot type and also any deformities uh, uh, will related to the any deformities related to the foot will also affect the weight bearing patterns such kind of weight distribution is not seen uh, always in the other foot types as well as any deformities okay generally during quiet standing the hind foot okay and fore foot bear a majority of the force by seeing itself we can say why because here the more trabeculae or formed on the hind foot as well as this metatarsals that is four foot okay so and um, some studies done by britain and tuna found a larger load under the rear foot with peak pressures they are almost twice as much as under the four foot okay so that means the peak pressures or uh, very much more seen under the four foot if you see the plantar pressures okay now in the case of plantar pressures are much greater during walking um, than during standing so plantar pressures why because uh, here uh, so during walking um, we are lifting the foot isn't it to clear the foot and we have to move forward or backward so that means we are lifting the foot from the ground that means we are moving uh, the foot again as the gravity here that means we are uh, using um, a greater force we are using greater force than the gravity and also uh, greater than our um, body weight also so then only we can uh, overcome the gravitational force so why because so if for example if the body weight is 50 kg and you are standing on the foot on the ground and the gravitational force is also giving the reactional force of 50 so you have to clear it off that means the pressure has to be more than this then only you can move forward or backwards isn't it so that is the thing so plantar pressures are much greater during walking than during standing with the highest pressures typically under the metatarsal heads and occurring during the push off of the walking that means uh, when we push off we are uh, almost uh, on the toes our entire body weight is uh, on the toes and then we are going to uh, uh, move this weight to the toes and then we are lifting the foot isn't it so that is the thing so when the fore foot is in contact with the ground and the fore foot is pushing to accelerate the body forward plantar pressure under the foot during walking is related to a complex interaction of multiple factors so normally these factors include physical characteristics such as age body weight and height as well as foot structure such as arch height and also hallux 
length and joint motion so these are the factors affecting the uh, complex uh, pattern of walking okay and then gait style and muscle action gait style and muscle action are also factors that will influence plantar pressures as walking progresses to running okay we have seen that uh, the pressure is increased from standing to okay walking okay okay from walking to running so what is going to happening so on during running what is going to happen definitely um, the plantar force and pre peak pressures are going to increase maximum force increased from 1.1 to 2.2 uh, times uh, body weight when walking was compared to running okay so then what happens excessive plantar pressures can contribute to pain and injury in other ways healthy people or contribute to skin breakdown in patients with uh, diabetes and peripheral neuropathy okay structural and functional factors such as hematoid deformity soft tissue thickness hallux valgus foot type and walking speed have been shown to be the important uh, predictors of forefoot plantar pressures during walking in people without impairments and in people with diabetes so this is about the weight distribution uh, in through ankle as well as the foot in the next session we are going to uh, discuss about the muscles of the ankle and foot thank you